Okay, question number 10 is from electrostatic. A simple concept regarding capacitor has been asked. A parallel plate capacitor has capacitance C1 in air. So the total area is A, separation is D in air. So the capacitance would be epsilon naught A by D. Dielectric is introduced as shown. The half part in terms of distance as well as in terms of area because the total area is A and this has been inserted in the half part. So this has A by 2. This segment is filled with one dielectric of constant 4 and the rest are filled with dielectric of constant 2. And now the resultant capacitance is C2 and we need to calculate C2 by C1. Well, the whole thing can be divided in this way. This and this would be in series and this is one unit and this unit and the whole unit would be in parallel. In other words, it would be something like this. This is the situation. For this particular capacitance, let's try to see, that would be the K is 2, so 2 epsilon naught Area is A by 2, separation is D by 2, so that would be A by D itself. For this, again, area is A by 2, separation is D by 2, so K epsilon naught A by D. And for this, area is A by 2, separation is D, so 2 epsilon naught A by 2 multiplied by D. So in this way, these two are in series this is one that's a case and this block and this block they are in parallel when you calculate this and you find c2 and when you do c2 by c1 you would get 7 by 3 so question number 10 will lead us to option number d one probable mistake in question number 10 is that many a times students take that this unit and this unit are in parallel if you take a half part but you cannot assert it because this and this would have same potential but this and this the interface will not be having same potential so the best way is this and this is in series and this is one unit and these two units in parallel as we have done so question number 10 will lead us to option d Question number 11 is again related to gravitation. It says a spherical body of radius r consists of a fluid of constant density. Everywhere the density is uniform and is in equilibrium under its own gravity. Now you got to see that due to all the gravitational force, every element would be getting an inward force. And that would be balanced by the force due to pressure. What do I mean is, suppose at distance r, if you consider a small element, it would be getting force of gravitation towards the center, but together it would also be exerting pressure on the component where is it touching. For instance, here the pressure would be P and here that would be P plus dP because lower you go, the value of pressure would increase correspondingly. And the force of gravitation which is acting on this particular segment would be balanced by the force of pressure exerted by the rest of the element which is in contact. We need to calculate the value of pressure at different location. Since gravity at different places is different, so we better go with the term of pressure gradient that would be dp by dr would be rho times g at this point that is g m small r by r cube. But then again with increase in r the value of pressure is decreasing so we need to put a negative sign. Now I will be getting dp equals to minus rho g m by r cube into r dr 
and at small r equals to capital R at the highest point the pressure would be 0 and at small r equals to this the pressure is P. This would give us P equals to rho g m by 2 r cube into r square minus this much. So what we have done is that we have successfully calculated the value of pressure as a function of distance r. Now all I need to do is that plug different value of r and I'll be getting these values for verification on which you would get b and c as the correct option. Keep in mind this section has multiple options which may be correct. So many a times you may get only one option or many times you may get double options or three options whatever given according to the situations. So that was about question number 11 which has answer as B and C. Now we'll move to question number 12. Question number 12 is from modulus of elasticity. And here you can see something unusual. Strain is in y-axis and stress is in x-axis. And even the statement is there. A student by mistake puts strain on y-axis and stress on x-axis. Based on this, we need to talk about the tensile strength, ductility, brittleness and about Young's modulus of elasticity. If we just redraw the graph, it would come something of this way. Now, if I bring stress on y-axis and strain on x-axis, we'll be getting something like this. So that's how things goes. Now, you could see that out of P and Q, quite obviously, P will be having more tensile strength than Q. Reason, the value of stress on P is higher as compared to Q without breaking. So quite obviously, P will be having more tensile strength. Regarding ductility, the same logic more or less explains the more ductility of P as compared to Q because ductility, the ability to be drawn in form of wire, of course, without breaking and that too is demonstrated by P. While when it comes for brittleness, Q is more brittle because you could see that the breaking point of Q is reached earlier as compared to P because in a lower value of stress, Q breaks as when, as when P breaks. So C option would be incorrect. Regarding Young's modulus, the slope of stress strain graph would give us the Young's modulus and you could see Young's modulus of elasticity for Q is greater than that of P, so D would be incorrect. So for question number 12, the correct answer would be A and B.